Ion Branch got in third down last week. Yeah. Uh, he's played a little bit of nickel, a little bit of free safety. Where do you see his best role in this defense? Yeah, we're, we're working, um, as you mentioned, at, at, at several different spots. And, and uh, you know, by and large, especially with a young guy, when, when you do that, you're doing it for, as I talked to him, you're doing it for a reason. You know, an older guy, you might be trying to save a career and, and find a role for him because he's running out of time. With a young guy, you're trying to find ways to get to the so, to point. Um, that, that, that is by design. I mean, he, he's a guy that, uh, you know, right now, the best way to describe it, when everything's stagnant, they agree to be where they're, they, be, they, 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 uh, they line up. Um, Zion's very functional and the guy we get excited about. You know, the problem is that, like, I tell these guys, we don't get, they don't, they don't seem to tell us when they're going to stay put and when they're going to motion and what formations they're going to give us. So that's just part of being a defensive player and a young player. It just, just added, um, I guess, clutter in some of those things, and, uh, like most young guys. And, I, and he's probably on the plus side in terms of his ability to process and all those things. And he's a big physical talent. Um, it's really fun to see him. Uh, that body on the field the other night. So we're just going to continue to press him, and then I got to do a good job coaching him and get him ready. But uh, very excited about that. Yeah. What did Rajon show you? Did he Yeah, I mean, I really highlight you know the linebackers last week. I mean, it's been a position we talked about just the, the kind of the injury bug and whatnot. And uh, you know, in those moments, you're, you're just praying guys, uh, you know, step up and and and, and, and pray in, in a very personal sense you are praying but I mean you're also rooting for them and then you're so badly and I know we've had this conversation is you know the most disappointing thing as a coach is when a guy gets an opportunity and, and, and then they, they kind of miss on it and um, you know I was pleased with, with his ability to get guys lined up there's a lot for the linebackers I mean it's just in college football now you're 20 some odd formations a game and there's so many moving pieces and you know, mentioned safeties but linebackers are the same thing you're constantly in conflict you're constantly talking and, uh, and so it's not just as simple as running out here on taking on a fullback, you know, like it would have been 20 years ago. So, um, you know, for, for a guy to get an opportunity like that and, and, and kind of run the show and then, uh, uh, you know, make some plays along the way, him and Shane, and obviously Shane has the experience where Rajon doesn't. But, uh, no, it was uh, was pleased with those guys stepping up. How would you describe this year's Stanford offense compared to what we usually know with the Stanford offense? Before? Yeah, I mean, I, it, it certainly is different. I mean, you're, you're just so used to, you know, the, the, the tight end uh, uh, component and, and, you know, uh, Included in that probably be a fullback, and you're, you're thinking about all the, the the personnel groupings that you may you know have to create in order to defend some of the things that they've done historically with the McCaffreys of the world, the Bobs of the world, and, and everything else over uh, a long time uh, defending those guys. So certainly different that way, but you know it, it uh, um, you know kind of uh, when you're watching it, still the use of the tight ends and still use you know with the quarterback run game and stuff. I mean they they they, they find a way to. to um, really stretchy in different ways. So, no, it's certainly a different visual when you're watching that on, uh, on, on game film. But, uh, um, and, and not to judge positive or negative, but you know, Coach Taylor does a tremendous job. I mean, you talk about a guy that uh, knows exactly what he's doing and then from all packaging and all. So, very similar to what Coach Hall was. I mean, they have a, a very good idea of you know, all the ways they're going to attack you. So, uh, we, we know it would be a big challenge. What did you see from Ashton Daniels' first game film? Yeah, I mean, when, when you're watching it, you, you're, you see, you know, obviously using them in the, in the run game a little bit, you know, which is uh, uh, now it's 11 on 11 football, you know, and, and that, that's something that, uh, especially in some of the scenarios where you're saying it's not really the zone read component, it's literally like a, you know, like a sweep type, type of deal. And, and um, it, it's, uh, um, you know, as we tell the guys, it, it, it creates scrums. It's not real clean. It's not a pretty picture. But if a quarterback's willing to, to get in the fray and kind of do some things that way, maybe a linebacker or a defensive back that's ready to, to, to mix it up a little bit too. But uh, no, that's the ultimate conflict as we talk about it. It's uh, you know, making sure that any moment he obviously can throw the football, but uh, you got, now you got 11 guys in the fit, so including corners and everything else. And, um, so no, I thought, I thought it was impressive on film. Took what the, the defense gave him from, from that standpoint. It was efficient and uh, certainly willing to take shots as well. So. Um, like, all, like all quarterbacks, they, they get better every week just to, to get game reps. So we'll see the, 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 the next version of that compared to last week. What was your assessment, assessment of the rush lane on Saturday? Yeah, I think, you know, generally speaking, pretty good. I mean, I, I, I think, uh, um, you know, so the quarterback gets a poke in some of those instances. So, you know, if you, if you get him on the ground, then you got him on the ground five times, you, you, you say it's a good job. And, um, so that, that uh, um, and in fairness, I, I think certainly that it was. Um, and then that's something that's a, that's a constant. That's never going to go away. You know, we watching the college football game over the past weekend, and it'll be the same thing in NFL. You know, the biggest difference between good offenses and great offenses is that for a quarterback to step up and step plays. Um, and then, you know, obviously we see our version uh, 
uh, on Saturday as we were rooting for, for our own place, right? But uh, no, I thought it was, it was better. And, and, and you know, the, the key for these guys is not just don't just be disruptive. You got to be productive. And, and uh, it's not extra credit to get the quarterback on the ground. And, um, I think for everybody, though, defensively, between week one and as you go through the season, it becomes more commonplace to tackle that guy for eight months. You can say, don't touch him. So, um, anyway, it's, it's a constant work in progress and uh, another challenge this week. What do you tell Zach about the target penalty? I know he's an aggressive player, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'd probably get it out of the system now and, and he can get a chance to, to coach him. I, I, there's no um, you know, malice on his part. I mean, he, he, he played the game a certain way, and so obviously you don't want to. You know, gear anybody back in the same token. They got to be smart. It's a great visual for everybody. Um, and, uh, you know, making sure that you go low, put pads on people. And generally speaking, in any, you know, instance, we're saying well, certainly we don't want to go high. Um, as a general statement, that's a, a good recipe for missing the tackle. There's a second or third guy in. Oh, my goodness, when do I want to punch in the football? I might as well line the uppercut a little bit better than the line. And I don't mean the guy's face. I mean as a football. Um, I got to preface that attack it, but uh, um, but that, that's you know kind of understand how to finish the play. I absolutely don't. This doesn't take away the, the attacking piece, but we obviously got to be smart. We can't lose guys like that. Going Let's into Let's do one more. Going into Pac-12 play, obviously this past weekend the conference kind of showed you know kind of explosive offenses to have Colorado and Washington. What's the challenge for the defense kind of going into this stretch where you see kind of the toughest um, tasks? I guess. Yeah, I, th I think uh, you know across the board. And obviously, you know, quarterbacks, I'm not sure they're all over the country. I, I, you know, I'm not studying everybody, but I, I'm not sure there's a conference that probably stacks up top to bottom, you know. And, and I mean, you can judge it by name recognition, but I actually, by turning on the film and watching them, guys have played a lot of snaps, generally speaking. I don't know, we, we rep reference one that's a, still a young prospect, but, you know, what, what, what maybe, you know, a guy maybe lacks in experience and, you know, has the athleticism to, to kind of fix some things with his feet and everything else. So, um, no, I, I, the, 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 the days of, you know, they don't have one, you know, it just, it's, it's not coming. So it, it, it's, I, I think a lot of that speaks to um, if you got a quarterback, you got a shot, and if you don't, you're, you're going to have some struggles. And so um, it seems like everybody in the conference has one. So fun to be a quarterback. Thank you, Coach Rich. All right. Thank you all.